Hey, and welcome to JB's Garage. It's probably the first time you've ever seen me on camera. Uh, this is uh, my uh, 2017 Kawasaki Vulcan S Cafe. Cafe really just means it's got the uh, three-tone paint and the, uh, the cafe style uh, front wind fairing, windshield fairing there. So basically, um, today uh, I'm going to attempt to... Uh, put this new booster plug I got here from uh, boosterplug.com uh, it's supposed to kind of regulate the throttle of motorcycles or um, specifically this model um, it has a really touchy throttle in first and second gear due to the uh, restricted muffler catalytic converter they put on this uh, I'm told it's because the EU, the Euro European Union, has uh, stiff restrictions, and the U.S. does too, but they don't really give a crap here as much as they do there. So, um, I guess they've kind of um, restricted this back a lot, so it causes some throttle issues and some, um, some idling issues. Um, and also, if you have an aftermarket exhaust system with popping and whatnot, this also regulates it too. So basically, this little device here, which um, according to Booster Plug used to be bigger and they made it smaller for 2017 on. Um, basically, what it does is this little sensor here, which you put somewhere up front here where, where it can re get a lot of air without there being... Um, heat coming off the motorcycle there get a good accurate reading of the outside temperature basically it tricks the ECU into thinking uh, that it's running 20 de degrees colder and dumps more fuel into the bike it is fuel injected if you're not familiar with these bikes um, I have let's see I think I have a, just over 100 miles on mine 166, a little bit more than I thought. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a, uh, it's got the Ninja motor, which is, um, it's a 650, and it's tuned in the mid range. You get more torque than you would on like a Ninja, um, a Ninja 650. So uh, you can get this booster plug on eBay from booster pl plugs. Um, page on eBay there, their store, or you can get it at boosterplug.com. Uh, it's always $159, um, but it's got really good reviews, and it comes with a couple little goodies that if you get your own, you can discover what they are. I don't want to tell everybody what they are, but they're pretty cool. And this cool little Calvin and Hobbes sticker that uh, shows them peeing on Power Commander, which is like a $400 device, uh, which doesn't even fix these issues from what I'm told. All right, so. Uh, basically, I think we have to start taking, I say we, like you're here, but it's just me. Um, some of the plastic off here so we can get to parts of the gas tank because um, it's gonna go underneath here. Okay, and I'm back. So I have went ahead and did a few things here. Um, I've removed a couple of the side covers. There was a side cover here. It had one Allen uh, screw, and I put the screw back in here just so I don't lose it. It is right over here. And then it kind of just pops off of there. And then there was, you put the key in the side, and that cover comes off. So from the things I've read on this, we've got this bolt here, and usually the tanks slide onto some rubber thingies on the front here, at least my Honda did. Um, this has an automatic shutoff valve for the fuel, so you don't have to worry about that. The only thing is pulling the tank off and sliding it out of the way so you can access the air box, which I guess I should have bought a K&N &N filter. I was doing all this so I could update the filter since it's under there but whatever you know 
That could be another fun day. Okay, welcome back. So, um, it's a little more involved than I thought. Or that people have previously mentioned. So, you have to take this Allen out. The two that are up on top of there. And the other one that's on this side. And then, look under there. Like, there's you just have to gingerly pry it out of those little grommets there gingerly I don't even know if that's a word I use it all the time now this lifts off and you got two tank bolts right there then we should be golden for the most part I have since Move the table from the other side to over here. And I have removed the front two bolts that were holding the tank on and the rear bolt here. And I'm moving all tools aside. I just kind of loosen these and then took them out by hand because I don't want to drop anything on this nice pearl white paint job here. That would be a bad day. Okay, back again. So what I ended up doing was having to release the clips. They're basically just like a squeeze clip that locks in, like underneath, kind of like there. And then the rails go through there. And, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the um, fuel lines. So there was two of them. And um, basically I just released them so then I can swing the tank this way without having to detach it from the back there. All right, so let's see how this goes. Sitting, but I got two options right now. Okay, so here we are underneath. These are the two clips I was talking about, and they basically hold these together next to the rail, the frame here. Basically got your air box right here. There's an airport. Airport. <laughs> air intake port right here. There's this rubber that kind of protects all these electronics. Okay, welcome back. So, I swung the tank out a little more out of the way here. Um, the ECU was here, and there was this here. I removed the one screw from the left side and loosened this one. Just to get this out of the way. You just lightly peel that back. Here is the plug it's talking about that goes into the air box. So you just pull up this tab lightly and slide it off. The new one, or the plug rather, Plugs, sorry, this plugs into the cable that was going into the air box, and the other side of it goes into the air box. And then you run this sensor down along the frame and up in this area over here somewhere. I guess if I'm getting a lot of heat off the radiator, I could always move it and find another location for it. But basically, 
Um, you just want to put it somewhere where it's going to get a good reading. Um, I did hear, uh, I, I saw a statement that somebody posted a line from the manufacturer, um, booster plug, that says you don't have to do anything with the sensor as far as weatherproofing it or keeping it from getting wet. It is good as it comes. Um, and it says it's a lifetime warranty, so I don't know. We'll see. All right, so... I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but I will try. That looks like it is snapped in. Happy little thing here. This happy little tree. It's not a tree. It just sounded cool. Like I was Bob the painter. Okay, so here is the booster plug. And I put a little zip tie on here just to hold everything together. I slipped it underneath this wire here. And it still goes up underneath the ECU, which is there. You actually can put it in and out of there without taking this bracket off. But it just made it easier so I didn't end up breaking clips or anything like that by accident. Alright, so I've run the sensor down here. And behind this mount. And I actually have it sitting in behind that bracket. So it's sitting there. It's not going to go anywhere. That's already stiff in there. So. Alright, so now I'll button her back up. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I got the tank in place here. I had to end up putting a block of wood under here before I put it back down just so I could get this breather hose that's here that goes up next to, uh, it looks like, like an evaporator box or some sort like that to get these clips, the hoses in, this, in these clips here. Kind of hard to see. But you saw them before. So once I got them clipped in, then I, you know, put the tank back on. So I started off by putting these two bolts in by hand. If you have any struggle with them, then you might be about to cross thread. You should be able to put them just about all the way in by hand. Right, and the same thing with this one, most of the way in by hand. And uh, I believe that was a 10 millimeter socket. I didn't say that before. Those are both 10 millimeter sockets. Why isn't this focusing? Okay. So I'll tighten those down, then I'll put the seat back on. Oh, I wanted to mention this. This bike has multiple spots where you can put accessories on here. I'm going to put the seat on, and then all the plastic pieces will go back on. And the same way they came off. So this one will go here. And the plastic pieces that are down there will go on the sides. And then we'll see how it rides. Okay, so I've gotten the seat on. I have the rack on. I have the side covers. But I want to show you the right side side cover that's like this. Because the easiest way I found is 
So here is the panel. It's got two of those little button things that push into the side of the gas tank. And it's got this rubber piece here. So the easiest way I found, oh, and of course it has that bolt, which is here. And I know it's here because I put it here so I wouldn't lose it. It's a good habit. All right, so the easiest way I found is you just take this little rubber piece here, which slides in between the tank. Well, the tank slides in between it. There we go. And you basically just slide it up. On, I don't even know if I can do it one-handed, but you slide it up under there. And then basically you just slide it all the way up to get to the point where these snap in. That's the easiest way I found it to do it rather than pulling the rubber piece off and trying to snap it in because it has a worse snap than these are. So I wanted to show you that before I buttoned it up. I'm going to do a test ride here. Might have to edit the end of this video because I'm going to leave it run as I leave. Wish me luck. I should know as soon as we start it up because it usually runs a pretty rough idle. awesome I've never been able to move it in the garage without giving it throttle and just letting the clutch out in first that was amazing I mean it was flawless I didn't feel like it was throwing you over the handlebars every time you let off the throttle like you know the engine braking for these first 166 miles every time I took it out and I let off the throttle it would just about throw me over the handlebars. It just would slow down so quickly. So, uh, well, that's how you put it in and put everything back together. I hope it helps. 
Uh, I know I'm a little OCD, but uh, no, not OCD. It's uh, ADD. That's it. But uh, hopefully this video helps, and uh, you can do it too. It's definitely worth the hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Awesome. Well, hope to see you again on JB's Garage.